Hey guys, I'm Michael Lowen for TravelCostaRicaNow.com. I've been wanting to do this video so long, so long. I'm going to forgo all the fact that we're a travel agency, but I would appreciate a subscribe. Anyway, so where are we? Where am I? I'm about a nine minute car ride out of Fortuna up at D'Angelo's Mountain House. We are going to be doing something we both kind of want to do, and we're going to be going around the yard. So, why don't you say you're here? They don't even know you're here. I'm here. Hola. So now, just full transparency, this is an Airbnb house, but that is not what we're doing here. We're not even going to go inside the house. This is all about the gardening, the planting, the flowers, the animals that we've been doing for about 10 years, right? You got this house about 10 uh, years ago, right? Nine, nine and a half, yeah, going on 10. Now we do, you can't see it here. We got a volcano over here when it's, it's a little cloudy right now. Now, I want to preface this a little a bit. A second volcano right there. Is there yes. a Chato volcano, uh, Arenal volcano. Not too many people know about two of them. So when, when this house was first purchased, it had a little bit of landscaping, very, very little. So almost everything you see back here, we... Very little. We did. But the whole yard looked like this grass field. <laughs> it had Literally. It had a tree. It had two trees. So... <laughs> so now remember, we when we got to Costa Rica, we didn't even know how much we liked plants. We didn't even know how much we liked the birds and the gardening and the orchids. Costa Rica kind of introduced us to that, but we were newbies. So when we kind of first started planting, well, I don't know if we knew exactly what we were doing uh, since. I still don't know what I'm doing, but I still love gardening where D'Angelo has taken it upon himself to watch every gardening YouTube video known to man. <laughs> and he knows how to do orchids and graph fruit trees and all that stuff i'm about a second year level botanist i would say <laughs> <laughs> so anyway this is uh i think what's interesting about this video is if anybody's thinking about moving down here and they're going to buy their own property because what happens is a lot of people want to start their own garden we know people that have tilapia ponds you know they started in their house we know you know all kinds of stuff and this is what we came up with so this could be you eventually we like the jungle Thing. But I'm going to say it again, we were newbies when we started and we're going to point some things out, maybe some mistakes we made along the way in these 10 years. Well, I came from the deserts of Arizona and Las Vegas and Mike came from the deserts of Las Vegas. So we knew nothing about plants. We knew about <laughs> desert, but we did not know nothing about plants. So anyway, let's do it. I see your coffee's over here. You might want to grab it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the mic. Well, let me just show you the front of it. This is the already overly grown front. But we love, we love these red palms. We love these red palms. Again, none of this was here. All right, so let's do a tour, guys. We're going to do a tour. Buenvenidos. Bienvenidos to the D'Angelo's Mountain House. All right, we've got to stop, uh, start at the beginning. Is this on wide angle? Yeah. All right. So, I don't know. Oh, sorry, Chispa. Uh, I guess I'll give you guys a tour. So, this is a guava tree, I believe is the name of it. A big ice cream bean. It's an ice cream bean well, tree. you have one back here, I right? have one in the back that is fruited. I'll show you in a bit. This one kind of grew from seed. I think a bird pooped it out and it just grew. I've already chopped it a few times. I'm going to try and form it. Well, actually, that's a good question. Why don't you tell... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's a few ways we've gotten plants. Because D'Angelo is very nice with his plants down here. He has a lot of people that ask him for seedlings or cuttings. cuttings. Uh, but along the way, we've also gotten, how, how do you get your plants? How did this all kind of Cuttings come about? and gifts from friends that, don't, that are trying to get rid of plants in their yard. Like just literally cuttings. Well, most of these, like these beautiful heliconias here, they're all like a whole, well, there's, I don't know, maybe 12 of them there, maybe more. Those all grew on their own. I did not plant those. Those they just sprouted. They, they, Once Alaconia start growing, they start spreading. But what you're not telling people, I, how many times have we stopped along a freeway? <laughs> we've stopped everywhere where we've seen something that was great. Yeah, I've, I've, I've gone by people's homes that had a great, like uh, these, uh, what do you call these, uh, hydrangeas. I would just go by. It's scraggly. They want them bushy. I would just pluck it stick it in the ground here and 
Okay, it they, they might think that's an exaggeration. It is not an not exaggeration. Not an exaggeration. Michael actually did a video on it um, a while back. I don't know, but would you do that like a year, two years? A year ago. You did that to, I think, this bushel right here. This plant, this plant, this plant. You did a video where you just stuck those in the ground and they have grown and grown and grown and I've already chopped them probably three times. So everybody has a green thumb in Costa Rica, but we've also, I don't want to tell on you, uh, D'Angelo, but there's been a couple times we've been at, at a hotels where we kind of like maybe a certain flower, a certain orchid, and you've... Uh, Not a, like a whole flower, no. I would take a baby that's on it or a, a clipping of it for sure. Um, just depends, like, uh, I don't know. A friend gave me one of, of these, which is a a uh, bright pink pineapple and from that one bright pink pineapple it grew and then the mother plant died and it gave me a bunch of babies and so i have all these wonderful uh pineapples that will grow they, they don't have a pink one right now but these are some pineapples here that's probably got another two months of growth on it three months to do and there's another one over here i actually love uh this section here it's so this whole thing, because the, the front door of his house is uh, right there. And I love all this. Ugh, These the are ficuses. Ficus. I planted them too close to the house because... Because uh, we didn't know. We didn't know. <laughs> they were little. And they, they have this aerial root stuff going on. And that is taking over. The aerial roots, I don't know what I'm going to do but with these But it looks ficus. very cool. Now, the thing about ficus is we try to clip them up here because the root system grows as much as you let the ficus grow. So we try to keep the ficuses down because the roots will start taking over and taking out plumbing. <laughs> so we, oh, yeah. So we try to keep them pretty low. We don't let them grow too much higher than they are right there. But I actually love the roots coming down. I think that looks really, really cool, especially, look at this. Check so this if out. you go and look at the roots, if Michael gets into the roots, I put a bunch of orchids and bromeliads here. So we got beautiful bromeliads growing. I don't think I have any orchids in bloom right now. Well, that's what's great too. There's always like something in bloom. Always, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, so I love this area. We did, I mean, we did all this. This I is do, my- Wait, can I just yeah, point yeah. something out real quick? I do make fun of this though. So we did not put this here. This, this is was, actually, it's not gonna be good against the sky, but this is a, some sort of random- Pine tree? Pine tree from Doesn't Idaho or something. I don't know why he will not take this Because out. it was it, one of the like two plants that were here when I got the house. But it doesn't house. even fit. Look how it's in the middle of kind of the walkway. This thing needs to everything. go. And it was only this big. It was this big when we first got it. So I don't know why he keeps this around. Maybe to represent the United States part of his <laughs> gardening. <laughs> to represent know. the only plants that were here. And it is kind of ugly. It, it is. just you, grows at the top. Michael complains every time about that nasty. plant. So all this we've done. Oh, you know? uh, we yes. This is a lot of work, guys. Lots, uh, lots of work. Here's a beautiful bromeliad that uh, grew from a baby. It three years old, and then it flowered, and the flower finally died this last month. And the plant got top heavy and fell over, and now it has two new baby bromeliads here. This is one of the babies from another one, as well as this one. I like the orange one. And there was a yellow one here that's dying now and having a baby of its own. But see these roots? I, I love this on the ficus. Is it, here's this patio right here. You can all kind of barely see. Also, we need to talk about, you know, uh, your gardening brings all the birds to the yard. Yeah. How's, how's <laughs> I was how's just going to say, the hummingbirds love to chase each other through the, the roots here, the root system, because then they can, they're territorial. So one chases the other right into the root system and he goes through and the other bird gets caught in them. And that's how they kind of defend themselves. And plus, D'Angelo does feed the hummingbirds. I get right uh, now about we, 15 to 20, how maybe many, How many different species through the time? <sighs> right now, I've nine? counted nine species on record. And I think I just saw two more this week. But I'm not sure if they're new or they're juvenile hummingbirds changing into their adult plumage. Here's another little experiment I do, because I do a lot of plant experiments. So pineapples are part of the bromeliad epiphyte family, and pineapples all grow in the ground, but they're a part of the epiphyte family. So I said, well, why not put it in the tree where epiphytes grow? And so this one I put three years ago, it obviously grew quite well. It has a little pineapple here, but it just doesn't have the nutrients from the ground 
to give that pineapple the growth it needs like those other two you just saw. So this is probably gonna stay little. Now, were you getting most of your knowledge? I mean, you're probably going what everybody does, going to YouTube videos. And All of it, of yeah. The grafting and the an enormous amount of trial and error and YouTube videos. How much, okay, I can't wait for this answer. How much time would you say that you spent uh, or you spent garden, or did spend gardening? <laughs> this garden is a full-time job, literally a full-time job. I spend a good 30 hours a week sometimes just trying to maintain it. And he has, he has a yard guy. <laughs> no. he, okay, he, it's difficult because most gardeners here they learn to just machete chop stuff and that's all they want to do is machete chop everything so if i hire somebody to come do the gardening uh, for example i hired a landscaping company land landscaping or landscaping whatever it's a, it's a landscaping company well they just machete chop stuff they don't landscape per se so i it's more of a cutting service yeah and i don't like that i want it to look nice and so i cut i do all the cutting myself and the gardener clean helps clean up because it's a lot of me debris mess and the only good thing he does like to do is chop the grass so basically i pay him to chop the grass i do all the rest well, of the yard i work. remember the tips on this there's a couple things as a culture costa ricans like their flowers like this all this stuff in in manicured rows they do not typically make their house look like a jungle. Yeah, they, they don't. Everything is very man manicure, manicured, so all the bushes are cut down. Now, D'Angelo didn't tell you this. It, when we were growing a lot of things at the beginning, we actually had to tape them off or paint them so that they wouldn't get cut. Yeah. We had to go, please don't cut anything marked in yellow paint. I would they, go with a spray can and, and a bright orange neon color and spray around my plant and say I will save that plant don't chop and it, it would be obvious it, it would, would it would it have would to be, be obvious, obvious otherwise they would chop it but we had to make it more obvious with painting it because they just would weed whack just about everything I'm not cutting on them because they're just you know this is their country and they see this stuff all the time yeah so they typically like to see it manicured which way should we go you guys should just show that view back to the front because it is a nice this is our neighbor dog, Dixie, who spends she a lot really, of time here. Dixie's been here since we have got the first day we moved in. And she's a neighborhood dog that's been abandoned twice already. She wants me to adopt her, but I don't live here full time. And she doesn't like to get in a car, so she doesn't really go with me Check anywhere. Check this out. This is nice. But she is here every time I'm here. Let's go. No, we'll go this way. Go this way. So actually, one of my favorite plants in the gardens are these, you know, which isn't going to be a great shot, is these fern trees. Um, they just get really tall. They look like ferns. Well, they are ferns, but they, they just they get tall, and they're, they're nice. They're really cool. How this, big does that get? Oh, it gets at least like 30 feet tall. This is my favorite one of the fern trees is this one here. This fern tree is two trees, actually. This is one little baby growing with the mom or a plant up here and this mother plant is about five six years old now i grew her from a spore that i got from a fern tree in guatemala i was at a, a place in antigua guatemala up in the mountains and they had these beautiful giant fern trees and i took a spore from the bottom of a leaf stuck it in my book came home dried the it was dried out in the book and then i planted the seeds uh there was quite a bit of them this was the only one that grew out of them all but it has since reproduced quite a lot did it's you my hear favorite. what he said he said i grew her out of a spore he's turned into a mother with these plants he's like a, a botanist i tell you i actually like this we call this i don't know what it's called this big thing here we call it i call it the tabacone plant tabacone is a very ritzy hotel here in la fortuna and they have a lot of these that are about 10 times this size. They get super and I'm tall. I'm pointing at this, not not this. But I think this. it's called pandanus or something see near the, that. See the roots here? That thing gets super, super tall, 30 see, feet or I more. I think this is way cool. I love this. He has to cut it, uh, have to trim it quite a bit because this will get huge. And I think that's some of the problem we probably didn't, haven't said. We've done a lot of trial and error, so we've as much as we've planted, we've also dug up. Yes, had to <laughs> dig and dig and dig. I cut this for the sunlight to come through because otherwise it will just grow sideways. This is nice. 
Okay, to talk a little bit about, so we're, we're on, D'Angelo's house is on about 1,100 square meters. I'm not sure that's going to show a good representation of the... No, we can go over there at some time. No, I was just going to say, um, so the person that owns a lot over here, has, he tries, he's tried to, you know, say Bende, which is, he's trying sell to it. sell it. But what happens is, if, if they don't, if they don't... Um, keep tabs on their lot it starts running over this is a jungle it, yeah, this it, is jungle. it comes it over growing very very quickly onto my side well, we can look back there real quick right well yeah it'll probably be easier this way but you can go that way so what he's had to he's had to do is although his property stops over here he has to cut down over here a lot too because they don't manicure it and it just it's a, you, a, you a, jungle, about Costa a jungle Rica, Things just keep growing, man. Just keep growing. There was one plant I wanted to show you over here, Michael. No, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I just wanted to show the the line is actually here Our on his property. People. But he has to do all this because it, it'll just overpower his side. Right, Which does, cool. it gets totally out of hand. So I have to keep up with the neighbor's lots. Um, <clears throat> this is one of the oldest plants in my yard. And... It's probably one of the oldest plants out of all the plants and giant trees in my yard. This little guy right here is some prehistoric thing. I should know the name of it and I don't know it. Is it a fern? It's sort of a like, yeah, of like a type of fern. Um, Does it flower? No, uh, it just, this thing is over 10 years old. This teeny, this thing is over 10 years old. I got it this tall, it was about five inches from a restaurant that used to be here. We did a video and stuff and we did an interview with the owner. It was called Just Good Food. That little plant was dying in the restaurant. It needed to be watered, it needed to be helped. So I took it home and I started um, watering it and getting it better. And before I could take it back to him, his restaurant burnt down and he moved away. But this came from Just Good the Food. The plant survived. Yeah, and that is, I gotta give it a better show spot because <laughs> I don't know plant. if we'll hit every fruit tree, so why don't you just say I've got some about of the 15 fru fruit trees here. Guayaba, the one I showed you earlier, is this one right here. This is an ice cream bean. It yep. creates this big seed pod, and it gets a little chunkier, and in there are a bunch of little beans that are um, covered. It's they like look, a pea pod. I mean, yeah, it's, it's like a pea pod, but the beans are all covered in white fuzz, and it's, it's like a cotton candy ice cream flavor. It, it's if good. anybody's keeping notes, this is one of my favorite fruits in all Costa Rica. So what I do, there's about... Uh, let's say 15 seeds in here covered in like a white furry thing. Yeah. I put like two or three seeds in my mouth at a time and suck on them and I freaking love these things. And so when they're in, when they're in, in a flower, or when they're producing, they sell them around town and you can get like 10 of these for like a dollar fifty. <laughs> so I love these. You also got- They have big seeds in the middle of the white, but they're easy to get around. This is a Mamo Chino, a Chinese lychee tree. It bloomed for the first time this year. It is big and needs to, most of my trees need to be trimmed, but I'm trying to grow them low to the ground so that the fruit can be easily gathered. Uh, my mango tree should be having mangoes this year. It hasn't produced, but it should be this year. You got uh, tangerine too, right? Uh, tangerine was in front of, uh, yeah, we already passed the tangerine tree. That was one of the trees with the property and it was little as well. Now it's a huge thing. This is Koss. It gave me fruit already this year for the first time. Koss is a very, very, if you come to Costa Rica, man, and you see C-A-S-S -S on the menu for a drink, Koss, I recommend it. It's good, good stuff, man. Koss. Yum, yum, yum. So, a kumquat tree. This always gives me fruit. Always, always. Kumquats. I'm not a huge fan, but I guess I always eat them when they're like too sour. Or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, so his line is right here in the back of the yard. It's a bob wire property line keeping the neighbor's lot, which there's, I have no neighbors there. I actually very rarely, but we do have white-tailed deer back here. It's pretty cool. Well, we could talk about that because I gotta say, since, you know, we've been planting for 10 years, it brings the animals, man. Lots of animals, did lots we of critters. Snakes? Did, lots we, of critters. did we mention snakes? <laughs> well, this is the jungle. I mean, it's Costa Rica. There's definitely snakes in this country. There are definitely snakes around the rainforest. We um, love, yeah, we love, I mean, personally, we love all animal life. So we're I kind get, of one with all the nature yeah. here. If we see a snake, we'll just uh, re, what do you say, re? I relocate them. I, I try to relocate them when I can. 
uh, this lemon tree, it just never stops giving me lemons. It's the ugliest <laughs> tree in my yard. It is like in badly need of help, but I'm sure somebody watching this video will go, you want to make that better? I yeah, a suggestion. It, it constantly, it, this is my only fruiting tree that constantly has fruit on it. Uh, there's a avocado tree, gave me avocados for the first time two years ago. Wait, this one right here, this right? This giant one right here. Okay, I don't, I, uh, sorry about the, we did this on kind of on purpose without a lot, a lot of sunny weather, so there's a lot of probably white, white out up yeah. there. Yeah, well, next to it is a star fruit that totally died this, not died, but it's getting there this year. It looks like the leaf cutter ants have had their way with it. Yeah, if you know anything about the leaf cutter ants, there's those ones that make those long lines and they're carrying little leaves. Uh, they destroy my trees. They'll yeah, take one whole tree, less than a week to demolish every last leaf on it. Which they've done to this almond tree over here numerous times. Yes. <laughs> so right there is uh, avocado, star fruit, mango, avocado, um, water, apple, uh, pineapple, lemon, lime. This is a uh, almond tree. This almond tree was a teeny little twig when we first moved here. I had never thought it would survive, and it just boom. well, it's been it took a long it, it's time. It's been eaten by the the ants. ants about what three or four times at least. Yeah, here the leaf cutter ants made um, a giant home under the ground here because here's a opening here that my gardener just chopped with the lawnmower, and here's another opening here. There's another two, three, four openings around here, and. They're hard to get rid of. I put poison and stuff down here to move to get them out, but they just move like you 10 can, feet away. You can really, with ants here, you can only call the herd every now and then. You know, you just, uh, that's a, for me, that's one of the worst things about working out in the yard. It's not the leaf cutters. They don't really bite you, but there's these little ants. Man, if you accidentally step in the wrong place, yikes. Here, Michael, get this. Let me move some dead leaves out the way. <laughs> but that's a good one. What is it? Um, it's part of the, I think, ginger family. I, that, it's the tip of my tongue, but I can't think of that name. Um, it's not edible or anything, but they do the little cups on there. Um, honeycomb ginger, I believe is what it's called. Uh, one of the names for it. The little cups dip over and inside each little cup is a bunch of water and liquid. And they say that is an, a natural antibiotic soap and all that liquid. And each one's full. Uh, these are like licorice, black type of plants. They're everywhere. So here's the plantains. These are plant plantanos cuadrados, squared plantains. I have a mulberry tree that I just planted. This will get ginormous. Okay, that looks a little sad. It just it's new. It just was a twig that got stuck in the ground and probably needs a stake to help it up. These are mini bananas, the little dental finger bananas, sweet bananas. Oh, they're little, fat and chunky and sweet. Here's a bushel up here. Let me see if I can't get that without all the white out. Uh, it's not showing too good. No? I think I have one uh, in ripe up in the front. I'll show you. So here's the back of the house real quick. This is uh, one of the side of the porch. We've got a lot of palms up here. This is a terrible representation, but this is, I don't know the name of this one. This is actually, I, I have it all tied up because I try to dig it out and move it. It took me over a day to dig it, and then a year went by, I never finished digging it, and now the hole filled itself back up. I think it's cool, but what is it? We don't know what it is, do we? <sighs> or or we've, we've been told a I've few been told, different names. Yeah, I've been told too many different names, so I don't, I'm not sure what this one is. So if anybody knows what the name of this is, please let us know. This is like two or three plants. This is two though, plants. Right? They're too close to each other, which is why I'm trying to move them as well. But they look a little bonsai if you see. It's over 10 years old. Yeah, it looks bonsai -ish. They kind of look a little bonsai. So we always thought this was interesting, it so we never messed with it. It produces these little tiny white flowers, and mine do not produce seeds or beans, but other ones do. So these white flowers each will turn into a little like coffee bean. It's not a coffee bean, but it looks like it. And Mine hasn't done it. I don't know if it's a male, female type plant thing. But anyways, this one right here is um, cinnamon. Beautiful cinnamon tree. I have two of them. Uh, let's see, we'll go this way. Into the we jungle. made cinnamon out of that tree before. Yeah, yeah, we chopped it through. This is my garden of haliconias, which is whew, the hummingbirds love. So the haliconias are always difficult to keep in check. They grow a lot, and where there's one, there's a hundred. <laughs> No, they are difficult, but Back once porch, they go, they go. Back porch, so we got hummingbirds over here. We got 
Uh, so we spent, I would say, hours, hours and watching hours and hours birds, coffee and birds. This is my first hummingbird nest I've had in the yard that I know for a of, while. That a while. I know of, yeah. It just started, so maybe in the is it, week or two we'll get eggs. So that's a hummingbird nest right there. Can you see it's it? It's nesting season right now. I have nests all over the yard of different birds, but they're everywhere right now. So yeah, we're always cutting these down, actually. I really need to gather up some money so I can purchase the lot next to me because uh, when Michael comes back and shows you the house here, the house is here, this little walkway we just walked through right here, and then where all these taliconias are and that big tree is the end of my property line. So. Yeah, so all this over here, although we've done all this and planted all this stuff. I maintain it. It's really not his property. <laughs> and somebody will build a house right here, right next to me, and I don't want that or need that, and I really need to get on the ball about well, trying to purchase this. Well, the way this is, you can, you, can you can still privatize with the house pretty yeah. much right next to you. These are the dental bananas that were in ripe. I put them here for the birds. They're super sweet. They're like, oh, yummy. You They're eat little. those, right? You could... Yeah, yeah, you could just, it's, it's, it's a beautiful, sweet banana. Organic. Uh, this looks tragic because I just planted all these little yellow things, flowers. Um, you just put these in here, but this is what they look like when they get taller. Is this flower here? They get really big. It's called a shrimp something. <laughs> we put these crotons in. These are crotons. I, I, really, I, I really love these bushes, but although they look pretty good, I've been seeing them look a lot better. We've just never been able to get them. Oh, I'll tell you what really did 100%. good this year. Really, I, I, I've been trying to get these to grow and it's been so hard. And this year they flourish like crazy as these lobster claws. Look at all of them through here, Michael. Go around like all of they're just amazing how many this season gave me. Yeah, those are, I like those. But you know what? I'm starting to look at this. I'm like going, you should go in the red palm business because, because <laughs> these, are, these, are, these are sought after, man. They are, but they're so difficult to get the babies off the bottom. Because they all grow together, They right? all in grow clumps. together, yeah. So when I cut the baby away from the mother, it, it's too stressful and it ends up dying. So this uh, front part is kind of a work in progress. A lot of stuff going on in here. Uh, like I said, this whole yard is always a work in progress. Always, always. Because uh, we're always moving stuff that, you know, maybe was a mistake to put in. Got too big. Uh, got, things got too big. Some stuff likes the sun. Some stuff likes the shade. It's, it's very, yeah. I guess what I'm saying, if we can do it, you <laughs> can do can. it, you know. Yeah. But uh, we did a lot of trial and error, but that's kind of what makes the adventure, right? That's yeah. kind of the, the journey is what it is. So, guys, I just wanted to show you this house. I mean, I, we love... Actually, a lot of our friends love this house, and we come up here a lot and uh, watch hummingbirds. And well, you didn't, we didn't show it. There's a barbecue a area in the back that um, yeah. we come and have barbecues and hangouts and uh, DJ sessions. We have a lot of DJ friends, and they do DJ <laughs> sessions out here. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to show you that because we're, I don't know, I want to stay proud of it, You right? I mean, it's... I'm super proud of it. I like it. It's, I love it. Uh, look back there. Look at this. Look at this. I get all so kinds cool. of wild turkeys. I get toucans. I get um, honey creepers the, and the, uh, the, uh, monkeys tanagers. Right over here. The monkeys are not in my yard, but they're like a hundred yards away. Uh, it's, it's, it's a jungle. I get lots and lots of animals. So birders, uh, this is a great place for birders. I actually should start marketing it for birders because there's so many birds around here. Yeah, there are. This is a quiet, secluded part of the neighborhood as well. So that helps with all the wildlife and stuff that does come around here. Did we mention that we love Costa Rica? <laughs> anyway, I guys, do. we really wanted to show you that. We're really kind of proud of it. Again, a continued work in progress. Uh, and he's the one that does most of it most now. Of it. It's now a that long... I've got old and decrepit. <laughs> it's a anyway, lot of work. guys, I'm Michael Allen. This is I'm D'Angelo. TravelCostaRicaNow.com. Travel Peace, guys. Hope it helps. Hey, you know things are going to pop up, and if you're thinking about living or traveling really anywhere, you should do your research. And what better way to do that research in Costa Rica is to watch our videos. Oh yeah. my God. Anyway, guys, enjoy your day. Ciao.